So understanding that, that homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia usually involves defects that affect both alleles coding for genes that impact either the LDL receptor or its functionality. Um, these patients not only have extremely high cholesterol levels, but because they have decreased LDL receptor functionality, or in some cases, almost no LDL receptor function, uh, typical medications that work through an end mechanism of upregulating the LDL receptor often um, have blunted responses. So the typical lipid-lowering agents that we use in the less severe form of heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, statins, azetamide, bile acid sequesterants, and PCSK9 inhibitors all work ultimately through enhancing expression or delaying degradation of the LDL receptor. Um, statins um, still have a place in the management of patients with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia because they also reduce production of cholesterol in the hepatocyte. Um, but unfortunately, their effect is, is, is again, um, less robust, often only about 10 to 15% LDL lowering in these patients. Um, we have in the past actually used niacin in these patients. We don't use it anymore, only because we have other options. Um, niacin can affect production of, the L, of, of cholesterol, but because of its side effects um, and because of a, a lack of good outcome data, um, obviously we don't use it anymore. Um, and, and so obviously the newest agent that we've had available for homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia is um, evolocumab, one of the two PCSK9 inhibitors, which was studied in a cohort of, of patients with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. Um, and it did reduce LDL cholesterol on average of about 30%. However, in the patients that had complete knockout of the LDL receptor, they had minimal to no response. And so again, if you don't have any LDL receptor activity, none of the medications that I've recently mentioned will work in patients with homozygous FH. So you know, we're really looking at medications that target production of cholesterol. Um, and um, typically uh, what we've had available to us in the past were two medications, um, one that's still available, one that is um, no longer available because the um, company supporting it has decided to stop making it available. So uh, one was a um, inhibitor of ApoB um, called mipamersin, um, and this actually inhibited the assembly of the VLDL particle in the liver um, by inhibiting the ApoB lipoprotein. Um, and the other is one that's still currently available called lomidopide, which is an inhibitor of an assembly enzyme that actually involves uh, um, the packaging of cholesterol and triglycerides and ApoB into either a VLDL particle in the liver or a chylomicron in the gut. And that medicine is called lomidopide. And it, it inhibits an enzyme called microsomal triglyceride transfer protein or MTP. And we still do use lomidopide in patients with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. The drug has side effects um, and it is tolerated if you use it properly. Um, but it does um, affect absorption of, of fats in the intestine and can cause steatorrhea if it's dosed too quickly. People have to be on a very low fat diet. Um, and it can also cause um, the accumulation of hepatic fat. And so liver function tests have to be monitored. Um, and if they do go up, the drug has to be down titrated or in more severe elevations of liver function tests, it has to be stopped. Um, so there are limitations to the medication, including the fact that it interacts with other drugs that are metabolized by the cytochrome 3A4 pathway. So um, certainly we're, we're always looking for new medications on the horizon that can help manage and treat these patients because the more aggressive we can be with LDL lowering and the earlier we can do it in a safe and tolerated way, the, the better it is for patients um, and ultimately I think for, for cardiovascular outcomes down the road. Uh, the newest drug on the horizon is a drug that inhibits um, a protein called ANG-PTL3, otherwise known as evanacumab. Evanacumab um, is a monoclonal antibody that targets ANG-PTL3. Um, and in clinical trials in patients with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, it's been shown to lower LDL cholesterol about 50%. Um, this is as much as the highest dose of lomidopide. Um, when taken for about 26 weeks in some of the patients in the clinical trial. And so it, it as good as what we currently have, but it's, I think, going to be much better tolerated. 
And it may be able to be used not only alone, but potentially even with um, some of the other lipid-lowering drugs that I've mentioned earlier, such as statins, etetamide, bile acid sequestrants, PCSK9 inhibitors, or maybe even lomidify. And, and so the, the lipid space continues to evolve. And even in patients with the most severe form of inherited high cholesterol, the options that we have available to us today are different from the options we had five years ago and extremely different from the options I had available to me when I was doing my house staff training 30 years ago. So it's an exciting time to be a lipidologist. And I think there are a lot of things we can look forward to um, in the future uh, with regards to managing these, these otherwise um, um, difficult um, to treat patients um, and, and hopefully um, improve not only their lipid profile, but their cardiovascular outcomes.